Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Tourism launches a study to assess the economic impact of tourism on the local economy. Lead head of the CARICOM Kwezai Cabinet, Honorable Mia Motley, pushes for quicker regional integration. Nominations for the National Independence Awards are now open. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayle. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries is currently working with the Department of Statistics to conduct a tourism satellite account study to assess the economic impact of tourism on the local economy. Private sector firms directly impacted by tourism are encouraged to participate in the island-wide economic survey, which was launched in September 2019. With an official report to be prepared by April 2020, the aim is to develop government's policies and sectoral initiatives that are better geared towards improving competitiveness and overall development of the sector that are directly linked and dependent on the tourism industry. General Novel reports. The ministry has made significant headway in the establishment of the Tourism Satellite Account, TSA. The TSA is a standard statistical framework and the main tool for the economic measurement of tourism. It provides credible data on the impact of tourism and the associated employment and St. Lucia's balance of payments. It also provides information on tourism human resource characteristics and is a powerful tool for designing economic policies related to tourism development. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, explained the benefits to St. Lucia. The tourism satellite account will significantly improve how we capture the impact of tourism. So taxes that are paid to government revenue, uh, revenue powers in the hotel sector, average daily rates in the hotel sector, jobs in the tourism sector, uh, linkages in the tourism sector. What is the dollar value? And so what we are able to do now by the, with the establishment of the tourism satellite account is to give a comprehensive overview of how tourism is making a, an impact on the local economy. What is the real contribution of tourism to the economic fortunes, the economic development? How is tourism playing a role in the sustainable national economic development of our country? The implementation of the TSA is being fueled by the recognition that it will serve to increase and improve knowledge of tourism's importance relative to overall economic activity to the home country, assist in the development of more efficient tourism policies and employment and creating awareness among the various players directly and indirectly involved in the tourism sector of its economic importance and by extension its role in all industries involved in the production of goods and services demanded by visitors that includes the agriculture sector. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede. Very soon we're taking uh, a presentation to Cabinet um, and the consultation is almost completed. I know that the template um, has been fairly advanced and this is being piloted by the Department of Statistics. Uh, when completed, uh, this is going to allow us to make more informed policy decisions uh, about tourism. The TSA was developed by the World Tourism Organization, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, the Statistical Office of the European Communities, and the United Nations Statistics Division. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, is highlighting the significance of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, noting the $7 million generated in revenue from the event in 2018. The SLTA Senior Marketing Manager, Jackie Mathre, says St. Lucians will have an opportunity to not only witness the culmination of the race in St. Lucia, but the initial sail-off in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. For us, it's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing testament to, um, to the value of St. Lucia and our offering and how we have kept this wonderful international event happening every year. Uh, this year, for the 30th year in Las Palmas, there will be a really big delegation of St. Lucians who are going to be going to see the start of the race, which I'm very uh, excited to be part of, where we're going to have a group of the, uh, the diaspora from the UK and Europe, and also the High Commissioner will be attending as well. For us, the 30th year of the Ark coming to St. Lucia is something that is a milestone and we really want to give the most attention to it. The Ark for us is such an important event with all the sailors coming from all these different countries and it really allows us to 
to highlight and show off St. Lucia in its best light to an international community. We're also begin having, for the first time, a social media presence, which get ready for that, because I think on our side, we really haven't seen what's been going on at the start of the arc. So this year, we really want to put a focus on the sailors getting ready, some of the events that are going on, and highlighting St. Lucia, because the, uh, the High Commissioner will be leading a parade of St. Lucians in Las Palmas to begin. CEO of the events company of St. Lucia, Lorraine Sidney, explain the trickle-down effect brought on by the arc. We understand that the visitors are coming to St. Lucia. We understand that they're taking part in what the beautiful island has to offer. And the calendar of activities for ARC is geared towards the visitors enjoying St. Lucia at the restaurants, at the marina, at the um, ancillary throughout the island. So we're happy that we're getting the spin-off benefits throughout St. Lucia. And that was CEO of the events company of St. Lucia, Lorraine Sidney. Lead head of the Quasi Cabinet on the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and Prime Minister of Barbados, Honorable Mia Motley, has emphasized the need for CARICOM to deliver on the benefits of regional integration. Prime Minister Motley urged the people of the community to be central in integration efforts. CARICOM News Times to Sankin English Francis reports. And it becomes necessary, therefore, for us to ask ourselves in whose interests shall we act? Shall we act in the interests of that average Caribbean citizen so brilliantly reflected in the speech of the right excellent Errol Barrow at Georgetown when he spelt out the bonds that connect us that are incapable of being broken even by bureaucracy? Or shall we ignore his words and continue to believe that we can do it alone because we have something called an Independence Day? The community, she says, should be propelled to urgent action against projection that by 2050, parts of the region could constitute one of the poorest performers in the world in GDP growth and per capita income. Prime Minister Motley believes that the community should hold through to the principles set out in the St. Anne's Declaration, which records the commitment made by heads of government to accelerate implementation of the CSME. How do we come to accept that we will continue to have a situation where we have surplus liquidity within this region, but those businesses within the productive sector, small, medium, large, or even nano, have difficulty in accessing funds in the region. How do we believe that our citizens will continue to believe that it can be business as usual to have to file new documents in each territory to form a company or to do business in Suriname, in Guyana, in St. Vincent, in Grenada, in St. Lucia, in Barbados, in Jamaica, in Belize? At what point do we agree that there has to be the description of claimed ground? We met in December in Port of Spain, and we settled on the St. Anne's Declaration, recognizing that unless we can have appreciable progress on a number of issues, the prospect of us not being able to sustain movement within CARICOM as reflected as, potential, as a potential outcome in the Golding Report may become one of our reality. The Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, has played a major role in the rehabilitation of the Denry Infant School. Here's Anissi Antoine. The Denry Infant School has been reconstructed under the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. The initiative is aimed at building climate-resilient communities across St. Lucia. Mary Flavia, principal of the Denry Infant School, explained that the school had been experiencing termite issues as well as flooding and leaks. I know for sure that the government would send in persons to treat the building for termites, but a few months down the line, the issue would resurface. For storms and hurricanes, there was once where part of the ceiling was gone. Um, because of a storm, so, you were there, so there was a delay in us beginning again. 
you know, starting education all over again because the, the roof had to be fixed. Then lately, just before the new facility was built, then you would have one leak surfacing after another. Flavia explained that an improved elevated structure, including a concrete roof, a lobby, a staff room and additional washrooms, has been constructed to ensure that the Denry Infant School is more resilient and accommodating. The classrooms are more spacious. There are sick rooms and showers. I must make note of a ramp. This is a special feature at the school that is very welcomed. Um, it would take care of, of persons with mobility issues, okay. not necessarily students, but persons visiting, persons working at the school. At one point in time, they might have an issue that they, they might need to utilize the ramp. We have um, a fenced facility that is new to us because at the other site, only one building was fenced. So it caused a problem with security. The principal expressed gratitude to the government of St. Lucia for modernizing the Denry Infant School. We are very grateful in Denry and at the Denry Infant School for this, for this new building. We are able to work more efficiently and effectively. This will impact positively on the students and the staff of the school. I am hoping that um, the other schools on the island are privy to such um, facilities. Under the DVRP, drainage works has also been done to alleviate flooding in the vicinity of the Denry Infant School. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. VFO Comprehensive Secondary School defeated Beanfield Comprehensive 24-18 to emerge champions of the Inter-Schools Under-19 Division II netball competition. VFO led all quarters 4-2. 12-9, 18 12. For VFO Comprehensive, goal shoot Darnell Dupre scored 6 from 25 attempts. Goal attack Ashania Joseph, 18 from 35 attempts. For Beanfield Comprehensive, goal shoot Zoya St. Marie scored 16 from 24 attempts. And goal attack Diaz Fontalio, 2 from 11. Final placings VFO Comprehensive followed by Beanfield Comprehensive, Antipo Secondary in third place. They were defeated Wednesday by VFO Comprehensive 33-17. VFO led all quarters 7-4, 15-11, 24-14. For VFO Comprehensive, goal shoot Daniel Dupre scoring 24 from 36 attempts. Goal attack Ashania Joseph, 7 from 15 attempts. Goal attack Irian Rudolph, 2 from 5 attempts. For Archipo Secondary, goal shoot Zenia Joseph scoring 5 from 10 attempts. Goal attack Novile Pierre. 10 from 14 attempts, and goal attack, Jenna Estefan, 2 from 6 attempts. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is expected to gain from an initiative of the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated as they launch the first set of foundation coaching courses in a multi-year plan starting Monday as part of its mission to build capacity among its membership and further develop coaching systems on island. From November 18 to the 24th, 2019, at least 50 coaches and sport leaders will be trained and certified under the Caribbean Coaching Certification Program, CCCP. The program is being facilitated by Dave Farmer, formerly of the Barbados Olympic Association and a trainer of the CCCP in the region. 
the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports coaches and leaders will go through the training on Monday 18th November to Wednesday 20th November. Following this, nominees from at least 13 member federations affiliated to the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated, as well as additional sport leaders identified as future prospects for course trainers, will go through the program. It is these trainers who will lead future sessions and scale out the curriculum to our local coaching prospects in 2020 and beyond. And that's our update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Order of St. Lucia will be commemorated on the anniversary of St. Lucia's independence on February 22, 2020, where recipients will be recognized and awarded for their contribution and services to St. Lucia. The National Independence Awards Committee is inviting members of the public to participate in the nomination process. Mauricia Thomas Francis is the chairperson of that committee. We have a lot of unsung heroes in St. Lucia. Over the years, ever since the award scheme was introduced, a number of deserving St. Lucians have been recognized. But we know there are many, many more unsung heroes that need recognition. So we're inviting the citizens to go out there and seek out for those persons who deserve recognition, get the nomination forms, complete them, and submit them to us for review. The awards include the St. Lucia Cross, the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, the St. Lucia Medal of Merit, and the St. Lucia Le Piton Medal. Some people tend to submit nomination forms and just give us a CV. A CV is not enough. It is okay to attach a CV. However, some more information has to be given. We have to get a, a comprehensive profile of the individual that's been nominated to give us enough information as, as to what it is that individual has done to merit the award that is um, being proposed. The deadline for nominations is December 6, 2019. Submissions must be sent to the Secretary of the Order of St. Lucia Committee in care of the Office of the Prime Minister, Graham Louise Administration Building, Castries Waterfront, or online at recognition at govt.lc. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. Do you know me? I've been forced to do this by my trafficker. I was promised a better life, but got forced into domestic servitude. I can be any age. I can be any gender. Any ethnicity. I am. I am. I am a victim of trafficking in persons. Know the signs. See it. Report it. If you see me, please help me. Call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Monsieur, Madame, Department de Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement CDC, GIS. Monsieur, Monsieur, Télévision Nationale, via NDN, Capazato, Nouvelle Creole. Capazato, Primus Hutchinson. Invest St. Lucia, qui a commencé à travailler à ce projet pour régler la situation du monde qui habite à ce terrain gouvernement. Chef officier exécutif pour Invest St. Lucia, Roderick Cherry. Déclaré que j'ai déjà commencé à mettre un en place pour adresser les nécessités pour ces gens qui ont déjà resté à la société de la pour passer 10, 20 et plus de 30 ans. C'est le chéri. J'ai déjà placé ces diverses utilités par ces gens comme courant de l'eau, chemin et qui ont aussi considéré pour offrir un prix qui est bien raisonnable et le traitement des préférences. Pour yon qui j'a bité pour plus longtemps. Cherry remarque qui, en pile se résident j'a associé Teresa la pour abat jotan. Et se yon tradition qui a existé en cette lecie pour en haut 50-60 l'année et yon naturel 
pour faire ce qu'on à l'occasion pour ni ce terrain ça là qu'on ça pour ni qu'on ça eux même a fait selon Cherry c'est attention invest dans le chat pour que tout cette liste ni un morceau propriété et ça eux même Cherry ajoute qui a parmi ces changements qui ont fait c'est pour considérer capacité et habilité ces résidents là pour payer pour ces terrains et dit qui invest dans le chat pas là pour faire profit mais pour entrer dans un agrément qui cordial, ni pour compagnie et les résidents aussi. Département de santé, qu'a conseillé public là, et principalement les madames qui enceintes, pour faire assurer et trouver, tester pour diverses maladies durant la période qui est enceinte. C'est madame Sala qui a trouvé, tester côté les officiers médicaux, qui a pris ça pour essayer HIV, syphilis qui moun plus connaître qu'on John et bien qu'on l'autre en langue natale nous, le potaïté est bien ici, à parmi l'autre. Toute madame qui en sait, n'y a pas pour un test ça là. Deux fois, qui ont tant en sait, en premier trois mois, et quand c'est dernier trois mois avant de accoucher. Selon le chef officier médical, il reste comme ça pour ces maladies ça là. Ça c'est Dr. Gil Gajada, il tout est nécessaire. Parce que, le cas ça, découvrir ces maladies ça là, assez bonnet pour traiter. Il est aussi important parce que yo ka ça informé monsieur yo c'est madame Mario en fait pour yo même trouver traitement l'avantage pour trouver tester bonnet ka réduit à sa possibilité pour ces petits enfants à la trouver maladie pas de en vote maman yo et aussi empêcher ces petits bébés à la mort en vote maman selon docteur Gajada, objectif là c'est pour ni plus maman qui en bonne santé, n'importe quel moment qui fait ce test-là, pas qu'il ne peut pas payer rien. Et puis, on s'est trouvé testé en lab, et de long, à l'hôpital Victoria. En conversation, nous, et puis, ministre des Affaires de Transformation Sociale, Honorable Lennard Montout, attention, aujourd'hui, c'est à son assistance finance pour maman et l'école, qui n'est pas capable de payer, et aussi, qu'il touche à son assistance belle fonde pour les gens commencer un petit business, ça y même. Nous avons aidé les gens avec assistance pour l'école. L'année prochaine, maman et l'école qui passe à payer l'argent, qui passe à acheter un uniforme, qui passe à payer le transport. À part du programme de transport de l'éducation, nous avons payé une assistance en, en direction ça. Entraînement pour les gens qui ont déjà quitté l'école, qui n'ont pas l'État, qui passent à jouer un travail, nous avons fait un entraînement. Nous avons aussi travaillé avec Belfond, ça c'est une autre institution qui est en bas ministre. Belfond a aidé à l'entraînement pour manier pour conducter un business, manier pour commencer un business, manier pour manager un business. Et là, ce monde a fini de faire ce qu'on a fait, Belfond a pris plus de 10 000 dollars en loan pour assister pour commencer un business. Là. SSDF a aussi ben, l'homme l'argent avec l'homme l'argent ça là. C'est un, un, un loan qui n'est pas ni pèse l'intérieur à Zoui. Ou quand on paye ça aux jeunes, ou quand on paye vie. Avec, ou quand on travaille avec Belfond pour faire un programme ça. Ah, C'est ça. Alors, on a divers programmes nous avons fait pour aider les gens qui ont apporté un SSDF là, l'année, coup de main ici. Coup de main saint c'est un programme qui est avec les familles. Ou quand on a des éducations, ou quand on a des entraînements, ou quand on a des manger, ou quand on a des cailles. Tout le pour aider ces gens là. Si vous avez besoin d'assistance, à, à psychological, vous pouvez aider avec ça aussi. Et attention, c'est pour aider à sortir en situation, sortir en pauvreté. Et pour ça, on les des pieds pour aider à L'année HOPE, HOPE, c'est un autre programme qui a fait un petit projet en commun. Et ce petit projet, ça a fait assez, c'est même ces gens en commun qui sont qualifiés pour faire ce petit projet. Les gens qui ne peut-être pas aller avec Machin, pour poser avec BID, avec Bagay comme ça. Vous avez fait ce programme. Ça là. Aussi bien, vous avez fait travail, mais pour d'accord, pour un travail, là, ou ni pour d'accord, pour un entraînement dans l'État. So, C'est pareil, ça, là, moi, je crois que I mean, nous ne pas parler de la boîte mais nous allons en petite distance pour aider la situation et pour élever la uh, condition en société. Eh bien, je ne peux pas encore, si vous conservez la vie, à une autre nouvelle. Pour t'en plus concerné le programme en ministère honorable d'un admon tout. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé là, mesdames, pour que vous autant qu'à vous regarder, 
ta vi to pochele pi mo ko ti de ko se ve la vi nga i pose to lot mo ve a ko yo la pose ka vi pose to o nisha messi opil primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise partly cloudy to cloudy at times with some scattered showers Scattered showers embedded in a moderate easterly wind flow will occasionally drift westward across the eastern Caribbean region during the next 24 hours. A tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Windward Islands is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 4.17 p.m., low at 11.19 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, high at 5.24 p.m., low at 12.36 a.m. Seas, moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.04 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.